welcome to Artistic Adventures. Today we're winding up this wig. We did the wig cap, we've processed the alpaca fiber, and now we're going to be putting the fiber onto the, the wig cap. So here's all the wefts that I made so far. I did have to make some more during the filming, but that was a start. I pretty much used almost all of that two ounces just to give you an idea. Uh, this wig is used a lot more than the normal glue wig. So here I'm just going to give you an outline of the plan that I have for the wig and this uh, will tell me how I'm going to sew the fiber to it. Alright, so this is the wig cap from the front. Uh, the dark part is the opening. So I'm going to put two rows of fiber for bangs right in the front and then I'm going to sew uh, lines of fiber around starting at the bottom. So this is a side view, so I've got those are the two rows at at the top for the bangs. And then I'm going to start sewing at the bottom and sew some layers around. I did change this design a little bit. Now this uh, first part, of, the part that I'm coloring in there is where I'm going to put the part. And I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute. Alright, so that's kind of the basic design. Um, that part is going to look kind of like this. I'm going to have two wafts of hair that I'm going to attach together in the center and then place over that center part. And that'll cover up all the uh, the, un, the glued pieces that will still be showing. Okay, so that's kind of the basic design. And we're going to stick mostly to that. I did change it just a little bit at the end, but I'll show you that later. All right, so now we're going to make that center part and take in two pieces of the the uh, alpaca that we glued together. Actually four pieces, two for each side, because I want to have a piece long enough to cover the area that I need to cover in the center. So I'm going to have to glue two of these pieces together on each side to make it long enough. So I'm just using E6000 to put a little dot of glue there on the seam between the two pieces, and I'll let that dry. And then now that that's dry, I'm going to come back and attach them together. And I put this piece of paper in between them just to keep them separate while I'm working on it uh, so I know where the two pieces are, are so one piece will be flipped over. Alright, so I put just a little bit of E6000 down on that seam area, pressing it down, and then we let that dry. After it's dried, you can see that we can flip it over and we're going to have a nice little part where nothing of the glue shows. And we'll be attaching that to, to the wig at the very end of this project. So we'll put that aside for now and keep the paper in there just to keep it separate. All right, so here's our doll with the wig cap that we made in a previous video. And we're gonna start, as I said, by putting two rows of the alpaca fiber across just the front part of the wig. And then we'll go back and put the layers of fiber in around starting at the bottom. And then that parted piece will go right here in the center. And I'm just using regular thread. I tried to match it to the fiber of the hair so if any any part of it shows it, it won't be that noticeable. Starting at the end point of where I wanted that fiber to come to for the bangs, I'm just going to start sewing. Now the secret here is you want to sew just right at the base of the glue area. The glue can be hard to get the needle through, but if you get it right at the base where it's not very thick, you get the best position for it to hold the fiber down. The glue is what is holding the fiber together, and that's what will keep it from coming out, but the sewing is what holds that waft to the wig cap, and it's really important that you get it at a, at a pace, place where it's going to secure it the most. So I'm just adding the wefts as I go along. If I need to trim pieces of the glue, I do. And making sure that I keep the edge of this right at the edge of the wig. And that way, the wig cap edge won't show once you finish the wig. Even though she's going to have bangs, I still don't want it to show. And if you wanted to pull her hair up into a different position, you would not want the edge of the wig cap to show. And as I said, you can go back and trim off, trim off the excessive, excessive pieces of that glue, but you want to make sure you don't cut too much or the fiber will start falling out. All right, so we've done the complete front 
piece across uh, for the bangs. And now we're going to start on that second row. And you can see there, if I turn it up, you don't really see the wig cap because we got it sewed nice right at the edge. And you can see the different the uh, distance from that uh, end of that to the ear. All right, so it's really important when you're doing this to clip off sections of the hair because this fiber is very fine and hair-like. It does get caught up in the thread sometimes and just gets um, attached to other fibers and makes it really messy. So I try to keep sections clipped off and keep the thread out of the way of the fiber. All right, so I've ended that first section and tied a knot and now about a half an inch back from that I'm starting another row and this will be our second row for the bangs and I wanted to tell you that I did notice a big difference between this Elmer's glue and the E6000 I ended up having to go back and use the E6000 the Elmer's glue really didn't hold it that well so that's an update on my experiment with the clear Elmer's glue all right, uh, there's my second row done, and we're going to add that clip to the front part of the bangs. Now we're going to start at the back and put rows of fiber starting at the very bottom. I'm going to do a short row there, and then we'll just keep continuing making rows as we come up to the crown of the wig. Once again, trying to keep it at the edge of the wig cap and also sewing right at the base of the glue. And I'm just doing overlapping stitches where I make one stitch, come back to the middle of that stitch to make the next stitch. And that that seems to hold it, this pretty well. Now I'll tell you, as I'm doing this, sewing at the edges of this wig cap was actually pretty easy. It didn't seem to want to slide off too much. As we get to the crown, where we're actually pulling up a little bit, it did... Uh, it did get a little bit harder, so you'll see that in the end, but uh, overall it, it stayed on pretty well during the sewing process. I guess you could attach it down to, like put clips on it and attach it under the chin or something to hold it on, uh, but I didn't really feel like I had to. Alright, so that's pretty much um, finishing up that bottom row at the very back and tied a knot. Make sure you tie really, you know, two or three knots in your thread. You want you don't want it to come loose, uh, and then the, the fiber would start falling off. All right, so I'm going to start my second row of fiber, and I'm coming up probably about three-fourths of an inch, maybe, somewhere between a half and three-fourths to an inch. You don't have to put these rows right next to each other. They really aren't going to show once you get the wig completed. And if you put them too close together, you're going to have a really thick, bushy wig, and also... You're going to use up a whole lot of fiber. As I said, this this process used more fiber than normally I use, but she did have a fairly big head head too. I'll have to say that. And then also, um, just doing this process, you tend to use more of the fiber than you do when you're just gluing it on. But I think the end result looked pretty good. And I'm going to show you here about the distance between the two. So you can get an idea. I'd say it's anywhere from a half to three-fourths of an inch between the two layers. And I'm going to continue that layer across off camera. Okay, there, there's the second row completed, as you can see. And that ended up working pretty well. And I'd say it's probably about three-fourths of an inch above the other one. And we're going to clip that off to keep the fibers out of the way. And now I'm going to start another row, the third row. Uh, again, putting it about somewhere between a half and three-fourths to an inch. You kind of get a feel for it when you're sewing it on as to what will show or not show. And this will leave room for a fourth row of hair across the back of the wig, which will, will pretty much work out perfectly for how I want the, the wig to look. Okay, so get that row started. And then I'll go off camera and complete this. As you know, I'm still working with that bum thumb. So my sewing is a little tortured while I'm doing it on camera because I have to hold the doll in a certain position. And again, you can trim off any excess pieces of glue, making sure that you don't trim
down too far so that you lose your fiber. Okay, so that's about half of it, and I'll complete the rest off camera. All right, there's our third row completed, as you can see. And we're going to clip that off to get it out of the way. If you'll notice, the hair is, you know, it is kind of like wavy and everything. I am going to wash this wig at the end, so uh, it'll end up looking a lot better once we get everything completed. All right, this is the final row I'm making all the way across. And I'm going to join it right to that edge where I did the bangs coming over in the front. And that will make sure we cover up all the, the front areas of the wig. All right, so same process, just continuing to sew about a half to three-fourths of an inch from the previous layer. And I'll get it started here to show you and then complete it the rest of the way off camera. Coming along nicely, yes. All right, there's our last row all the way across and you can see the distance there. And we're gonna go ahead and add that to the bunch that we've clipped off in the bottom. And then we're gonna start finishing up the top of the wig. Now this is where the part will go right in the middle of this section. So we're gonna measure right now to see if we've got it, uh, the back far enough up that the part's gonna cover it. So you take your part section and just lay it across. You want it to be able to cover the glued parts. And I can tell from this that this is not quite enough, but I don't wanna put another row across. So what I'm gonna do is put two rows across the section on the sides and then a shorter row across the back. All right, so two sections here, two sections here, and then I'll do another small section across the back. And that should be enough that the part will completely cover the glue in the front and the back, and that it'll fall down over the sides. Now you wanna make sure that part section has lots of fiber in it, because that's what covers up all your sewing area and the glued area and you want to have that nice and thick. You're always going to lose some fiber once you finish a wig when you wash it and, and style it and comb it. So having that section really thick in the beginning is really important. All right, so we got our first section sewed on that side and I'm starting on the second section. And you can see here the wig cap's bunching up a little bit as I'm sewing and that's just because I'm pulling up as I sew and it, it tends to pull the wig cap off a little bit. Uh, it wasn't too bad, better than I actually thought it would be, but just something to think about as you're sewing. You're trying to hold that wig cap on as you sew and make sure your your uh, wefts are going on straight. And you do this on the with the wig cap on the doll because you want the stitching to be stretched out to the size of the doll's head. If you try to do it off of the doll, your stitching would uh, pull when you try to put it on the doll. So we finished the one side with the two rows. We're gonna go on this side now and put the two rows. And I finished that part and yep, wig keeps trying to come off. And now we've got this section where that's the front of the wig. Okay, right in the center, that's the front part where the bangs are. And this is where I'm gonna put another short row in the back just to make sure that my parted section is gonna cover up all the uneven pieces where you see glue. And that really is using, I mean, I think I used all but about two wefts of the two ounces of fiber for this wig. It's a really nice uh, full wig. All right, I'm putting this paper towel around it just so I don't wanna get my thread caught up in, in the alpaca hair as I'm sewing. And now I'm taking that center part, I folded it over so that you can see the glued part. And you want to put the end of the glued part where the hair is coming out of the glue right in the center of that open space because that's where you're going to sew it and that's where your part will be. And I, set, I pin this down just to keep it in place while I'm sewing since I, I don't have full use of my left hand. It's a little hard to hold things and sew. So the pins made it a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna sew down that front edge and put a couple of knots in it just to hold it really tight at the front. 
making sure I've got the glued edges of the bangs covered up completely. And then I'm just going along the base of this sewed piece, of this glued piece, sewing it down to the fiber cap. Get to the end. Also there, we're going to put two or three, usually three, I think, knots there to make sure that it holds and that it's covering up the glued section of the wefts that I put on the back. All right, so now we've got that sewed in, and I'm going to trim off some of that excess glue. That'll make the part lay down a lot nicer. Just make sure you don't cut too much or your fibers will start pulling out. You can always go back in with little dabs of glue if you need to, if you cut too much. All right, so now we've got that done. We're going to flip over the half part of that wig, that uh, part section. And now you can see we have a nice part on the top of the doll's head. And cut off that uh, paper towel. Let all the hair loose. <laughs> all this mass of hair. But now what I want to do is somewhat position it where it's going to be, end up, and then go ahead and cut the bangs. And this was just going to help me as I washed the wig and put it back on the doll to see where everything is positioned. So I'm making sure that I have it in an even section in the front. I'm leaving some on the sides. I can always cut more later of the bangs, but I just want to get the center section cut. Always cut less area than, well, cut more like the bangs. You want to cut them longer than you think you will need them. Because you always end up thinking, oh, this is way too long. And then later on, oh, that well, was kind of just right. <laughs> so I've got the bangs cut there. And just making sure that I have pretty much everything where I want it. And you can see there the finished raw wig before any washing or styling. Now I've washed it. I put shampoo, conditioner. Then I took my time and combed out the sections holding the fiber at the base to make sure I didn't pull it out. I'm going to trim off the ends that are a little bit straggly. And this wig really turned out nice. And you can also use a curling iron if you wanted to make it curly. I'm using a flat iron just to flatten out some areas. And I give the slightest curl to the ends just to make them look a little bit more finished. But basically, she's just got nice, beautiful straight hair now. And I have to say, I wasn't really crazy about this doll when I when I received her. Um, I just I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't as happy with her as I have been with some of the others I purchased. But after I got the wig on her, I really kind of love her. I don't know. It really just changed her her look and gave her more personality. Just goes to show you that some of the things that you can do for a doll, like face ups and hair and costume, can really add to the doll. So don't give up on a doll that you purchase that you don't necessarily love right away. There she is with her nice, beautiful wig. And I really do think it turned out really nice. It took a lot of effort. But one reason you do these alpaca wigs like this is to get a color you want, to get a style you want, and for it to look a lot more like human hair. The synthetic doll wigs just don't look the same as the alpaca fiber, which is just so beautiful and human hair-like. So I hope you liked all this wig making video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And as usual, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.